The new stuff does not stop coming, and today it's another shoe review. We're taking a look at the brand new Nike GP Challenge 1. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. So every time a new Nike shoe comes out, I pay attention. Historically speaking, they've always worked a bit better for me, and while I do really like my Nike Vapor Pro 2, I have been looking for a new go-to shoe recently. Enter the GP Challenge 1. Now you hear GP and you immediately think GP Turbo, and yes, this shoe is technically replacing the GP Turbo. I say technically because this thing is really nothing like the GP Turbo, but before we get into any of that, let me remind you that any of the products we talk about here you can check out on our website racketsandrunners.ca. And please remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and let me know in the comment section what you want me to cover next. So the Nike GP Turbo is gone, and I know a lot of people like that shoe, but for me, it never really worked out because it was just too far away from what I'm looking for in a tennis shoe. Something that squishy was never ideal for the feedback that I want in a tennis shoe. I know it worked for a lot of people, and those people really liked that, but that was my main problem with the Turbo. So what has changed? Well, for one, that full-length zoom unit that made the Turbo so squishy and cushioned is gone, and it's been replaced by two units, one in the forefoot and one in the heel. Because of that, the Challenge feels way stiffer. Even the foam itself has gotten stiffer, so you're not going to get anywhere near that level of cloud-like cushioning you got on the Turbo. They've also added a pretty sturdy plastic shank in the midsole, again, changing that flex profile from super soft and cushioned to much more snappy and rigid. To be honest, this shoe feels way more like the Vapor 11 and Pro than it does the Turbo. In terms of the stiff to soft ratio, it lies somewhere between those shoes with the Vapor 11 a little stiffer and the Pro a little softer. It is interesting to me that they decided to go in this direction because, as as much as I didn't like the Turbo, those who did like it liked it because it had that plush cushioning. Maybe that sensation just wasn't popular enough. I feel that Nike has been trying to standardize a lot of their fits because one look at the challenge and I could already tell the silhouette was pretty similar to both the Vapors and the Turbo it replaces. Now it's a similar shape and silhouette, but the Turbo was very narrow and had a super low volume fit, especially in the toe box. And I think Nike realized that was an issue for a lot of people because this is basically just that with more volume everywhere. It's almost as if they took the fit of the turbo and magnified it a little bit. That higher volume is most noticeable in the toe box. It's still not the widest shoe I've ever tried, but it fits much more comfortably out of the box for someone like me who has a decently wide foot. I did still have a little issue with width on my fifth metatarsal though. That's where my foot is the widest, and this rubber cage that they added on the lateral side does not soften up very much after breaking. So that means that while this is technically Nike's widest fitting shoe right out of the box, both the Vapor Pro and the Vapor 11 will eventually be more comfortable around that area once you break them in. That rubber piece is very important though. We'll talk about it more in a bit, but they didn't just put it there to screw with people that have a wide foot. What I will say is that if you're coming from the Turbo, you'll be 100% fine with the width, but if you're coming from another Nike shoe or something wider from another brand, just be sure it's super comfortable right out of the box. Now the rest of the shoe is plenty comfortable. The midfoot is quite roomy. You can see that rubber piece doesn't really factor in past that metatarsal area, so that width issue won't be a problem here. Then on the medial side, these ribbon lace loops actually go all the way down to the midsole, so you can control how tight or how loose the upper wraps around your arch. I love that type of tech. I actually prefer a pretty snug fit, so I'll crank down on them pretty tight. But even then, these ribbons do a good job of smoothing that compression so there isn't too much pressure in one specific area. Then the heel is super comfy, nothing stiff or awkwardly tight around the fit back there, and there's plenty of foam, so I don't think anyone will have a problem with it. I really don't want this to become a GP Turbo bashing session, but yeah, one of my main problems with that shoe was that I never felt fully confident with it in terms of lockdown and support on hard lateral cuts. Stiffening up the outsole has helped with that big time, but that has more to do with stability. It's what they've done to the upper that makes this a way more secure feeling shoe. That little rubber cage may be the main culprit for me feeling pressure in the forefoot, but it's also extremely important for how well the shoe performs in terms of lockdown and support. It's a really solid piece of rubber, so it stays very rigid when you do apply lateral pressure. I never felt that my foot was moving around the shoe when I was going for big cuts. I don't know if it's worth the width issues for me personally, but for those of you that are comfortable with it, you will really appreciate the locked in sensation that it gives. Then you've got those lace loop ribbons I was talking about. Not only are they great for providing a seamless wrap around your foot, 
but they also do a great job of securing you into the upper and making the transfer of energy as one-to-one -one when you are pushing it hard. I am such a big fan of good lacing systems like this because it's such an easy way of exponentially improving your shoe's support. Just quickly touching on why I think this new lacing system is better than the turbos, the lace loops on the turbo were great for cinching the upper down on your foot, but because they didn't go all the way down to the midsole, they didn't help nearly as much with lateral support. These might look less substantial than the ones on the turbo, but because they go deeper, they're just way more effective at preventing that rollover. Now it's not all sunshine and rainbows here. I mentioned that the heel was super comfortable, but that comfort does come at the expense of a bit of lockdown. It's not terrible, but there is a bit of room in there for your heel to move around so you won't feel ultra secure, but it is still enough to make you feel safe for lateral movement. Again, not a huge fan of stability on the turbo. Super squishy outsole, really high stack height and soft upper. I always felt a little bit wobbly in this shoe, which is why I pretty quickly moved away from using it on a tennis court. Stiffer outsole, lower stack height, better lockdown. They've addressed it all, so in terms of stability, it's night and day compared to the turbo. But for those of you who like the sensation of the turbo, it's really not like that anymore. I'd actually say this is really similar in feel and stability to the Vapor 11. Okay, maybe not as brutally rigid, but it is a pretty stiff shoe with a grounded and stable feel that lends itself more to that classic stability than modern cushioning. Plus, the outsole follows the width of the upper. It's wider than most of Nike shoes and wider than the industry average, so you're standing on a nice, stable platform. It really is rock solid under your feet. How does this all translate to movement on court, though? Well, for one, if we're talking which shoe is more responsive between this and the turbo, there isn't even a conversation to have. It's the challenge by a country mile. Everything about it, from the more locked-in sensation to the stiff plastic shank, there's just more snap and zing to your step here. I wouldn't necessarily use the word springy because the turbo did have a way of adding a bit of spring to your step, but that only came when you stepped down on the zoom unit and that made you feel like you were losing energy, so it came at too much of a cost. It is also worth pointing out that it's a way lighter shoe than the turbo. It is still pretty heavy, weighing 417 grams in a size 9.5 US, but in comparison, it feels feathery, which just adds to that responsiveness. My one little issue with moving on the challenge is that heel movement. I just don't love the feeling of not being super locked in back there, and when you combine that with the pretty stiff outsole, the two just don't move in perfect cohesion. It's a similar issue to what I have with the Vapor 11, albeit a little less intense here because the midfoot locks you in better than on that shoe, but it's when you go for big lateral cuts and especially slides that it does become a bit of a problem. When I'm sliding, I want the perfect ratio of grip, slip, and movement from my foot, otherwise I don't feel totally confident in the shoe, and that's kind of what I felt here. It is a bit of a bummer because I do think this outsole would be really good for sliding, especially with this cutout in the midfoot, but I never wanted to go too big because of that. With all that said though, when comparing this thing to the turbo, everything about its movement is more stable and confidence inducing. The only area where it loses out is in shock absorption and comfort, but that's really only if you're actively seeking those out, and most tennis players aren't because we're so used to tennis shoes being stiff. Is the GP challenge made for people coming from the turbo who want a similar feeling shoe? Honestly, no. There's really not much about the challenge that made me think turbo. It's way more traditional, and honestly, I think it's more so made for someone who wants a similar feel to what the Vapor 11 has, just with more lockdown, a bit more support, and more stability, especially because it has a wider platform. In fact, if they had called this the Vapor 12 and changed the look of this rubber piece in the toe box to make it look even less like the turbo, I don't think anyone would have batted an eye. Quickly touching on durability, most of the shoe is great. The outsole has shown barely any signs of wear after about about six or seven hitting sessions and that rubber piece in the toe box is plenty robust for toe dragging and of course that area that always gets abused when sliding. So everything points to excellent except for one big area and I just don't get it from Nike because they know this is an issue, they've proven it with the Vapor 11, Cage and Pro. That right there is exposed ribbon material right where the laces usually take most of the beating on the back foot when you're sliding. On these shoes it's covered which is great to keep your laces intact but here it's an important part of the lockdown system that is going to break after enough low slides. I don't know if Nike doesn't want people sliding in this shoe or whatever, but that does feel like a pretty big oversight on their end. 
Once that goes, you'll have to drill a hole through the upper or something. I will say it does look like I'm mostly missing it when I slide, but there is some wear on that ribbon material, so I'm not confident to say that it's never going to break. Real bummer though, because other than that, it's going to be a pretty darn durable shoe, especially with this rubber lateral cage here that's going to help it hold its shape really well when it's usually supposed to soften up. With that said though, that is going to be the end of this review. Thank you so much for watching, and remember that if you do want to try on the GP Challenge, you can come visit us in-store, or you can check it out online at racketsandrunners.ca.